Hey guys. Alright. Welcome back to another Dark Souls lore through. Uh, now we're going to go to Sen's Fortress, which we've been waiting to do for a while now. Did I switch to the Crush Shield? Good. Well, first thing we notice is that uh, Sigmar is gone. Siegmeier. Now, there's a couple things about this place. Um, where's the other guy? Um, sen, so in, in Japanese, sen means a thousand. Oh, that was so satisfying. Um, and so some people have kind of said that, like, I mean, you can see the trap down there or whatever. Some people have said that this, you know, kind of stands for a thousand traps, but as Epic Namebro always points out, the Sen, as described, like, in the Japanese, is always written in katakana. Um... And so that would, you know, indicate to people that actually I am going to I think I might try to um, we'll go down there in a second. Um, Sen is written katakana, meaning that it's a it's a name, it's a foreign name even, you know, um, but it's not the katakana, it's not the kanji for a thousand or anything. Um, so that it's, it's probably unlikely that this means whatever, a thousand traps or whatever. This is uh, also an interesting fact, I think this is an oversight, but this is the only uh, hidden wall that you can't roll through in the game, I think. I'm proud, you know, someone could probably prove me wrong with that, but... So I think it's just about, it's just a guy named Sen that made the fortress, and I think Sen, you know, is related to the gods, because obviously this, it's said that the gods created this as a proving ground for Anerlando. Although I believe that was, you know, post, you know, Gwyn's reign or whatever, because, because, as we'll see once we get to the top here, I, you know, Anerlando was sealed off at some point. Maybe we'd be able to see it from here. Yeah, again, I should have gotten the binoculars. We'll get up close, but yeah, I mean, there's a door right there. And, and you can see that there's, a, there's like a brick wall put into it, and then the only way you can actually get up is by these other means. So, um... You know, I believe that, you know, Sens was created after Lord Gwyn was, you know, dethroned or whatever, in whatever capacity, and, um, and that this all happened post the events of this game, and that Sens Fortress is, you know, somewhat new. So yeah, I mean, basically, like... guys believe. Um, I think Sens is relatively new. I mean, it's not... I mean, I think a lot of time has gone since the Age of Fire and the lengthening of the fire. But, um... I think in terms of the whole world, like, Sens Fortress is a recent addition or whatever, so... Um... I hate this area. 30, yeah. I mean, this is pretty much not a weapon for me anymore. And the only thing is, are they going to fall down? I mean, there's a different way to 
go about doing this, but I'm just going to do this for now. Demon Titanite, maybe a Titan will catch bowl. Oh, that is a rare weapon. And the fact that I called it makes it all the better. There's another weapon here. Okay, so let's read the scythe and the, de uh, the Titanite catch pole. I think the scythe probably doesn't have anything. Halberd with a large blade, scythe adjusted for battle, designed especially for slicing. However, one false swing leaves one wide open. Oh yeah, so the scythe, I think this is the case with the scythe. I mean, doing a whole like weapon expose, it's not lore, so uh, it's a whole nother series, but like the scythe, if you hit someone, you recover quickly and you can swing again. If you miss someone, like you like stumble or whatever, and then that's what it's referring to one false swing and it leaves you wide open i like that titanite catch pole weapon of the titanite demon a faceless stone monster born from titanite slab one of the enchanted weapons perhaps from residual power of the titanite slab known for its leaping attack which comes smashing down on foes from above it is interesting to note that you know the residual power um from the slabs um, we can clearly see is is lightning, which you know sunlight. Um, I'm not gonna go down this area because I don't like fighting those guys, and there's actually no items there. It's just more more demon titanite, which I probably won't use. I, I mean, when I get boss weapons, I'm just going to, you know, read them. I'm not going to really use them. Um, and more chances at the Titanite catch pull, but I already got that, so I think I'll leave those, at least for now. Maybe there's something there I'll get later. Alright, and now on with this... with Sen's Fortress. So there are these obviously really cool snake, serpentine beings here, um, and uh, I would suspect that these are related to the person that created the Moonlight Butterfly. Um, There's an item that we're getting up here that's going to talk about um, serpents a little bit more. So I guess I will hold off. But I think it's interesting that on the way to Ann Arlando, um, where the Duke's archives had, is and where Seath, like, you know, did all of his experiments. You know, we find we actually find a ton of people in in Sen's fortress. Um, you know, I mean, these obviously are kind of enemies, so they're related to you know the game world. Uh, like, it's not people like us, but we do meet a lot of different types of people in Sen's fortress from all different parts of the world. And we'll we'll meet them in a second here. Um, yeah, so these are the Silver Knights, um, or at least they're, they're stone statues with the Silver Knight-like armor on top, which again looks like the Dark Knight, or the Black Knight armor. Um, I don't have a reason for these, but it almost looks like they're put into storage. Um... I don't know if this is where they were made or something. I, it actually doesn't really have any reason, but it is interesting. Uh, 
Um, yeah. <laughs> so, um, obviously there's this guy here. He's just chilling against this wall. He's just, you know, he's just chilling. Um, oops, that is unlucky. I thought the ball would hit him again. But uh, we'll, we'll come back to this guy, so I'm not too worried about, like, interacting with that guy or whatever. I mean, it looks like maybe you could talk to him, but you can't. <laughs> um, but I'm just saying, I'm just going to wait until, like, we get to the section where we can deal with him before we do anything. Um, yeah, so... Oh god, get out of the way! Are you kidding me? Okay, so it looks like I might not have been able to get hit by that boulder. So I just panicked. Oh! Instead of just hitting the guy till I died. I guess what one thing this doesn't seem that it's good against is bleed. This weapon, this armor set. Okay. Let's see if we can get this guy first. In this game, in particular, um, taking on more than one enemy at a time is not really designed well, balanced well. So unfortunately, with a lot of guys like that, I mean, especially the way they stagger, I mean, it's fun. Like, it's a good mechanic in a sense. Like, you do have to, like, problem solve and do whatever. Like, you can't just... Um, you can't just like take out people like you have to take out people one by one and and whatnot so but uh for that reason you know if you get two that gang up on you or whatever you pretty much just have to like wait it out and play slowly or whatever it's kind of annoying These guys are just giving me uh, bad uh, scenarios. Okay, so I guess this guy doesn't spawn a second time. Oh. And you just die. That was weird how different that was from the other time. Alright, so... Ring of Steel Protection, which, again, is related to the people that we're going to find here in this area. Boost defense versus physical attacks. The ring belonged to the Night King Rendell. It grants its wearer protection by boosting defense against physical attacks. Of the many legends surrounding the Night King Rendell, one of the more well-known speaks of his standing down a giant drake and slashing it to pieces. So yeah, Night King Rendell, I believe that, you know, he was here, um, and that, that is his ring, um, and that, I don't know why it's necessarily in a chest, but we will, we will run into some other things related to Night King Rendell. Can he literally not step on that? That's kind of cheap, actually. Like, video games work best when they're um, sandboxes, I think. Um, when enemies and players can activate the same traps. Oh, man, I'm, like, so 
I was just about to go into this whole thing over here, and I forgot that I gotta go over here first. Anyway, I think that the they should be able to trigger the traps, that's all I'm saying. Alright, so I forgot about this. Uh, it's kind of interesting. So this is Shotel. Let's uh, read this quick before we get on to uh, Mr. Sigmire over there. Um... Curved sword with a sharply curved blade, created by Aster, Earl of Kareem. Requires great skill to wield, but evades shield defense to sneak in damage. So yeah, the shot, the shuttle is the weapon that we saw. Um, that we saw Latrek using, and Arster of Kareem, the Earl of Kareem, uh, apparently created that. Um, and so this is probably another person from Kareem here. So once again, we have Night King Rendell, and we'll find out who he kind of is associated with. And we have Kareem, we obviously have us, we have Sigmar of Katarina. By the way, these guys are alive, uh, usually, uh, but when they're in this one part, when you know when you talk to Sigmar, uh, he's killed them for you, which I think is really adorable. Um, Alright, so let's see what... Uh, Sigmar has to say now that he's on the inside of the fortress. Hmm. 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 Oh ho! Ah! Where did you come from? Splendid news, I tell you. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Ah, so you see my plight. Yes, indeed. I've run up against a wall, or a ball to be precise. I'm afraid I'm a bit too tough to be up running those things. So here I sit in quite a pickle, but who knows? Perhaps we'll have another development. <laughs> Once again, he uh, indicates that he's too fat to do something, which he doesn't seem like he is physically in terms of the models and the design work stuff. Um, like you can. I mean, I can't see it in this view particularly, but you can look in and see what his size is. It's just kind of weird. Perhaps I could try some rolling. Bah, no charm. My head would spin. <laughs> hmm. I, seems like that might be a clue, but that's a terrible clue. You cannot roll past the balls of all things. Perhaps. I think maybe he's just making a pun of the uh, balls rolling. So... Up we go. I do really like, you know, in terms of detail, how the center track of all these things is, I'm not going to risk it, uh, is all like, is kind of like worn down to a, uh, to, you know, because the ball, <laughs> what do you call it? Like a semicircle because the balls are rolling on it. it even those steps right here, you know what I mean? Like those, those could easily have just been regular steps that the they designed. But the, you know, like these, like I mean, the steps I'm walking on are like straight pretty much all the way through. But these up here, like, have this curve to them because balls have been rolling down. Anyway, all the details are really great. Uh, speaking of uh, details. This is kind of an interesting one. So we can see here the this um, I guess this is their idea of a clue. I don't know if it's a great one. But here's the elevator you ride which you can get hit or killed by. So you can see it go all the way up and stop and then go up a little bit more and then come down. So I guess that's your clue number one you're gonna die somehow? I don't know. I mean, it's not the greatest whatever, but um, that is interesting that you can't observe it, at least once you've seen it or whatever, so. Okay. <laughs> Alright, I'm just, I'm gonna do this normal way, by the way. Um, but I am going to do it by way of this area up here. Oh my goodness. Okay. 
So there's an area over here um, which you can uh, you can unlock this, you know, so that I guess this is a viable way to Well, I stand corrected. What's going on? I guess when you come around the other way, you're supposed to um, I really thought that was a, you cannot open it from this side. Huh. So now we have the Black Sorcerer and the and the Sorcery Hush. Uh, I think we've kind of learned a lot, most of what we no need to know about these guys, but let's just, uh, about, you know, Sorcerers and whatever. But let's see if this is anything cool. Hat worn by secret Sorcerers at Vietnam Dragon School. They secretly work with sound-based spells and never reveal themselves. I mean, I guess that's a confirmation of something. Uh, we read in the uh, in the oral um, s sorcery that you know it can, if you play tricks with it, but it helps for some secret things or whatever. So this is another one: sorcery developed by a certain surreptitious sorcerer at Vinheim Dragon School. Mass all noises of caster. Effectively, Vinheim is controlled by the Dragon Skull, and it is no wonder that the town has its share of dark secrets. So I want to I want to make sure like, I mean, so this is this is a great way to go up right now. But like, what's over here? This is the yeah. I'm just gonna go the normal way. I, I could have sworn that uh, that I did this in the wrong order. Like that shouldn't have opened, but maybe like everything, you know. You remember something weird and whatever. I'm just gonna do this the normal way. This is very. Uh, Indiana Jones. So something that's kind of interesting, you can actually either fall or go down here. There's nothing down here, um, but I mean, if you were to like go down at a certain stage here, once the balls are like that, um, it, it just makes it so you can't fall out. Or <laughs> fall out? What am I even talking about? Uh, it's just so that you can get out again uh, and you won't be like trapped but not dead down there um, but yeah you can wait for these balls to kind of pour up and of course now the question is like well what's gonna happen what's gonna happen now well there's a ring here which is the one that I wanted to talk about in fact I might wear this permanently I'm done with this actually okay Boost item discovery, so I'll drop more things, which is what we're going to want to read lore. Um, but it says, the serpent is an imperfect dragon and symbol of the undead. Its habit of devouring prey even larger than itself has led to an association with gluttony. This gold ring engraved with the serpent boosts its wares item discovery so that more items can be amassed. So, yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, probably these serpents were created by Seath or some process with that. I think that he was probably trying to create dragons, um, as were a lot of people throughout the um, whole Dark Souls world, uh, in Dark Souls 2 and Dark Souls 3. Um, but serpents are imperfect dragons and are associated with undead or humans or gluttony. You know, I mean, it does specifically say undead, but I, I read that as maybe humans or not gods and stuff like that. Now, we do know of like some characters that are serpents in this game. The, the primordial, primordial serpents, uh, King Seeker Framped, and as we'll meet later, Darks, uh, Dark, Se Dark, <laughs> what is it? Dark Walker Koth, something Koth. Um, so, um, 
serpents are imperfect dragons, so I wonder if they are related to the everlasting dragons in any way. I, I, I wonder how they were created, how they came about, as they probably, you know, we know that Framped is friends with Gwyn, and um, he um, is obviously working towards Gwyn's goals and stuff, so he's obviously a friend of the gods. So I would associate them after, you know, the rule of the gods. Um, yeah, so this is a mimic chest. Um, there's no reason for me to do this because I don't... I don't want what's inside of it. But I think what's, you know, it's interesting to note about them. The, you know, the first... The first, uh, by the way, that lightning spear is not a, um, that's not a weapon, it's a special weapon that is the, a spear that has been infused with lightning. Um, I think it's important that it probably is here, but I don't, that's not like another weapon. But I think it's interesting because I, I do believe that Kath, or Kath, Seath is the one who, uh, there's also blood on this by the way. Well, might as well say while I'm on here before I die. There's blood on there to indicate that if you were to continue to go up, you would get hit by spikes. Sorry, I'm unfocused. Um, so, um, Seath, um, you know, the closer you get to Seath, the more uh, mimics you get. So I think that mimics, you know, they could be related to... Um, you know, the dark sorcerer, sorcerers at um, Finheim Dragon School because they're very playful. Um, but at the same time, I mean, you run into much more of them um, when you get closer to the Duke's archives, which is obviously Seath's realm. So I don't know why these things change. Um, it used to be coming down here. I mean, there's Sigmire, for example. Um, and then without anyone doing anything, then it was going down this way once we got to this section. This is where we were going to go. And now, oops, now that guy died. I was going to point him out. That, that, um, maybe that's someone else. Nope. So the guy sitting up against the wall right there, basically we busted through the wall and we killed that guy. I thought we had more time to talk about it, but anyway. Um, so it, was, it was, went there, then it went here, and then if we change this to say go anywhere else, uh, I guess this is fine for right now because we're going to want it to continue here. So we can get, I mean, we want it to go here, just go out. But the thing is, is that, you know, when we do this, we'll go down. I believe it switches back to there. Um, so I'm not really sure, like, what, if there's supposed to be someone controlling it or not. Anyway, I suppose I should probably have done this a little bit later, but... Now that we uh, break through that wall, we have a new area over here, and we can see someone in this thing. Hmm, you seem quite easy. A rare thing in these times. I am Logan. I'm a bit cooped up, as you can see. I have a bright idea. Suppose you set me free. I'm old and empty-handed, but I could repay you with knowledge and sorcery. This place is not in my mind. The inactivity is repressive. So this is Big Hat Logan, who we've heard so much about. Um, and uh, we know that he was going to, well, Greg said, I think he's going to Anor Londo via Sen's Fortress, probably to seek the Regal Archives. Well, he never got that far. He got caught in this trap first and there's an item over there I won't waste our time because we won't be able to get it yet but anyway we need to get a key 
so that we can free him, which we will be doing because I really like Logan. Now, as far as I'm aware, this won't re-trigger, but I pointed out the back, so there should technically be no more rocks falling, but I think it like reshifts to here. Yeah. So we have to go all the way around again. And I don't know why that is. Oh yeah, by the way, there's this way to go here where you can fall down and, and there's, there's an item there, but uh, we are going to wait to get that later. I gotta come back here anyway, and it'll be nice once we have like a homeward bone scenario. Um, Alright. Oops. Wrong turn. It's a maze, this place. So yeah, I don't know what switches it around, but... Anyway, let's proceed on... And I do have sorcery, so we might want to use that for the guy up there. So you can fall down here without dying. It just leads you to an area you've been before. Um, hopefully I cannot aggro this guy and go get these large Titanite shards. dead. So yeah, these, these guys are different than the, um, these are called man serpents, I guess, because you can get their sword. It's called a man serpent great sword. And uh, these would be, I suppose if we got the flamberge, we might learn more about them, but these are just like the sorcerers of that group. So, we don't need to do this, but I mean, you know. Bye. So you can also fall down here, but it's like a longer way. In fact, it says be wary of death, but let me see if I can uh, place... Do I have a prism stone? Wait, I really thought I found one of those. Maybe not. Um, nothing over here. It is an interesting thing to look down at the level, so... Um, that's that one item that I said I'll go get later. Um, you can fall down over there and get to it, but yeah. I mean, this is pretty much the whole level that we've traveled so far. And if you look up, then there's, it goes up straight to the sky. I mean, there's a grate, but this is the top of the level up here, uh, which we're going to go to right now. Uh, there is a trap here, of course. Um, there's two pressure plates you want to avoid. And I think I'm just going to go grab the bonfire just so that we can uh, 
we can just hang around this area and do a bunch of different things and whatnot, so. I suppose I should use that. Though I was on the search for 900 souls, but now I will just uh, do that. All right, so now that we're at the top, we're gonna meet a few people here, or a few scenarios here. Um, I guess the first thing is that when we come over this way, is there an item over here? Um, when we get to this area, we're going to come across Balder Knights. So that's another, that's another kind of group that are here. Um, so we've seen evidence of Kareem, Catalina, Katarina, Balder, and whatever Night King Rendell is a part of. Not gonna drop anything interesting, are you? Flame stone plate. So remember I was talking about the speckled stone plate earlier. Let's see what the flame stone plate is. Stone plates, the symbol of a true knight, grant the strength to face various hardships. The stone, red plate, symbolizes fire and boosts defense against flames. Okay. I'm gonna assume that the speckled stone plate says the same thing. In other words, there's not a lot of lore on it. So I guess the first thing that's in order here is that we should uh, just go up and kill this guy so that we can kind of walk around here with impunity. I mean, he does shoot where you've been like five minutes ago. Uh, <laughs> I mean, if you're running around, it's... But, you know, I want to be able to look around do things and whatever so let's just take him out while we're up here he can even shoot you on here like here's the dark spot to indicate that he you know can fire over onto there he gives me a tight night shirt so often it's crazy well, I was gonna say invade, but yeah, I do need to be human to like summon Black Iron Tarkus. This is my favorite move of his. He freaks out and then he just falls down. So yeah, these are the giants, by the way. I, I didn't really, I mean, we were talking about um, giants um, when they lifted up the uh, the gate or whatever, but yeah, those are, these are giants. And they kind of work for the gods, I guess. Um, you know, they're keeping this trap, whatever. Um, they keep this whole fortress working. Um, that move seems very similar to me to a move that the, uh, Iron Golem does, um, as well. So I wonder if the Giants are somewhat thought of as Golems. Um, they certainly are in Dark Souls 2. At least it's, well, dra uh, uh, Giants and Golems are related. Um, but yeah, we can see here this, uh, Iron Golem that we're going to fight, and we can get a clear view of what I was talking about. So this kind of like tower here behind the Iron Golem obviously had a, a, a door, and a door big enough to fit gods and humans through, but it is bricked off and walled off, and now there is the final guard of Anerlando, and you have to get a special um, guide to bring you to Anerlando, I think one of these uh, buttresses or whatever up there. But um, yeah, so 
obviously we'll go to that in a second. This is interesting. So over there, those balls are like immobile, immovable, and breakable. But <laughs> here they're just like, they just explode. Like they're all hollow or whatever. I guess these are different than those balls, even though they look the same. These were exploding when they hit the ground and these are just rolling over you. So, I don't know. Um, just all the traps that, uh, that uh, Sen had in mind, whoever Sen is. So actually, I forgot that, um, I forgot that we were going to be um, summoning here or whatever. So let me, let me turn human real quick. And I might as well kindle because, you know, why not? I, I guess we do need <laughs> humanity for the whatever, uh, but I'll, I'll figure it out. Um, I don't need to kindle this bonfire at all, but I just like to kindle. When you go over to New Game Plus, all of your bonfires stay kindled or whatever. It's kind of nice. All right. So here we are. Having a more humanity uh, boost your item discovery as well, I should mention. But, um, you know, I don't want to get caught with that stuff, you know, losing it. If I happen to die from a weird way. Need large Titanite shards. All right, and so now we come over here and we find another Knight Baronique. Who you can parry, by the way. Oh. Let's see. Ugh. Got a timer, right? Oh, no good. Not really good at parrying these guys because you can't repost them, so I mean. Oh, there we go. So, I mean, it's not really, like, all that valuable. But notice their huge iron... I was lucky. Their huge iron she um... I don't think so, buddy. Their huge iron shield and their black iron armor. Uh, if only we could have gotten an item from, like, one of their armors so that we could learn a little bit more about the Knight's Baronique. And up here is yet another person in this area. <laughs> what? Oh, God. oh my god. Why did I turn human? Um, well, um, that was weird. He wasn't shooting me. And then, um, so I took my chance. And then, of course, he, uh, he completely uh, took advantage of me. Sometimes when you play a game so much, you kind of take some stuff for granted, and I'm a pretty sloppy player at so at various points in this, because, you know, I have my own kind of method of getting through areas, so sometimes I kind of do a more risky play. All right, Baronique, what are we going to do this time? Ugh. Drop something? Nope. So this is uh, Ricard, Prince Ricard, and he fights with a rapier. But uh, he's really easy to parry because he like hit so many hits. But I just guess I need to. Okay. 
To me, I feel like that should be a parry. Oh my god. Okay, so... <laughs> he goes... He, like, goes back, and I go to parry or whatever. I'm just gonna forego uh, becoming human, I guess, to get this timing down. But he goes back, and so I go to uh, to parry or whatever. And he just, like, I, I guess it's just a bit too early, but I, it seems to me like... Of course I say he's easy to parry, and then I'm gonna die from him like 50 times. Plenty of time to maybe see. I, you know, maybe he doesn't drop anything, but I think he does. All right. I could, of course, play this safe, but you know that's not fun. See that? Okay. I mean, I'm just saying. Like that looks like. It should be parried. Now that wasn't, but. I guess if he catches you, then that's why it makes it hard to parry. But I think, like, in multiplayer, this is not that bad of a thing to, to parry because. Man. Okay, well, I guess I'm not going to be parrying him. Like, I maybe he's unparryable? <laughs> like, that really seemed to me like... Ugh. Let's read about this silly goose. A rapier with intricate decorations, chosen weapon of the infamous undead Prince Ricard. Ricard's exploits are told in a monomyth. He was born into royalty, but wandered the lands in a fateful, ill-conceived journey. He became undead and disappeared up north. So everyone's trying to get to Anne Orlando, especially when they come undead. Everyone wants to be a chosen one, I guess. And he had a little stash of things here. One of which is a very interesting item, the Divine Blessing. We'll read that. And a rare ring of sacrifice. <laughs> so, boom, 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 boom. Okay, so, yeah. We know what the rare ring of sacrifice is, and the rare ring is not that different. Same type of thing, but you don't have curse deal with you. This mystical ring was created in the sacrificial rite of Velka, the goddess of sin. The magenta shaded ring is especially rare. It's where we lose nothing upon death and will be freed from any curse whatsoever but the ring breaks. So there's an item from Velka um, and the goddess of sin there. But we also find the divine blessing. Holy water from goddess Guinevere. Fully restore HP and undo irregularities. The goddess of sunlight Guinevere, daughter of great lord of sunlight Gwyn, is cherished by all as the symbol of bounty and fertility. So it's interesting that there was two items there. One was from Velka and one was from Guinevere. Perhaps they are from different people and they are not Ricard's. Uh, and Ricard is just one of the passers-by and he maybe had the divine blessing or he had the, you know unlikely probably that he had the ring of Elka but um yeah it's kind of an interesting contrast there but yeah Guinevere is uh, Gwen's daughter and is the goddess of bounty and fertility which will be <laughs> 
which will become apparent once we meet her. Alright, now that we don't have any Ricards to deal with, um, at least <laughs> I hope we're okay, I'm probably going to fall off the ledge or something stupid. Alright. But there's a important guy over here. We should definitely talk to. And he's the next in line. Now, uh, there's two things here uh, which we can do. So we can actually jump over here. I think that's what this is indicating. And we can kill that guy. Uh, but unlike this guy up here, it's lucky that guy he misses. But unlike the giant up there, this guy always responds. So there's no real way. I mean, you, you know, if you want to chunk, you can do that. Also, there's a sniper. Uh... Oh, is that another Boulder Knight? Look at me. I said there was only one Boulder Knight uh, corpse in the game, but I guess that's maybe another one. But that's a sniper uh, crossbow, and we don't need that, so I'm not going to fall down and do that. But we definitely want to go over here. And... Um... Just looking around to see kind of like what's up around here. You can learn a lot from looking at stuff. All right. There's this guy who's also wearing some interesting gear. Ah, uh, what? What? Who, who are you? Another one dead, eh? I took my son's fortress alive. But I'm no different from those vile creatures. I was driven by conceit. Ah, you think you're different? That you can handle it? Yes, I, I remember that feeling. For I was the same. So, let me help you out. With your soul searching. He's hovering on the ground. Off the ground. For sure. Kind of, I was like, wait, am I standing on something weird, or is he whatever? But he's definitely hovering. Uh, yeah, so he took on Sen's Fortress, just like us. I guess he's taking a breather. I don't really know. But let's see what he has to say. There's nothing more to say. Oh. I'm finished. We're both on the brink, you see. End of story. Big bloody fool. Let me give you a nibble of advice. Don't even consider visiting Amorlondo. Not in your state. For a century they've tried and failed. The Night King Rendor, Black Iron Tarkas, and even Logan himself. You won't stand a chance, you'll be eaten alive. But go along if you wish. If only to deepen your despair. So he said a century. So, I mean, we know that Quailana taught Solomon 200 years ago, for example. Um, so that means that Sen's Fortress was created after those events i mean I, I i'm gonna take what he says as canon or whatever that he didn't say about a century or over a century i mean he said for a century people have tried and failed so i would say last hundred years this came up that makes a bit of sense um he talked about uh night king rendell black iron tarkis who we'll meet in a second and logan <laughs> even logan himself well we met logan we saw logan so he's telling us that everyone is trying to get to Anorlando. He's kind of like, he, he's crest, I think he's called the Crestfallen Merchant, but he kind of plays the same role as the Crestfallen Warrior at Fire Lake Shrine. It's kind of like, I've tried and I'm pretty much giving up. Let's see if he says anything else. Let me give you a nibble. Don't even consider for a century of the night. Well, he's got a bunch of items, so let's take a look. Green Blossom. We read that when we got it from the little weird things in Dark Root Garden. So he does sell Titanite Shards and large Titanite Shards. I do have seven, which means I can level all the way up, which I might do before I take on Ann Orlando. Hmm. But he's got a, a bunch of unique uh, 
swords and he has a bunch of or weapons and he has a bunch of unique items that will give us some indication about a lot of different things. One of the gigantic straight swords. Very few have what it takes to wield this incredibly heavy damage dealing monster. A favorite of the knights, Berenique, known for their heavy armor and black iron targets. So the Berenique knights that we've been kind of fighting here and there in the same realm as Black Iron Tarkus. Great Axe. I think we found this already. And then the Balder Shield. Shield of the Knights of the Ancient Kingdom of Balder. Tweaked for improved stability, Balder was the home of Knight King Rendell, but the kingdom was reduced to ruins after a widespread outbreak of undead. Which is probably why Knight King Rendell came here and died here. Um, you know, I mean, if the crestfallen merchant is telling us that he, you know he's tried whatever i mean unless there's a part of the lo myth that got lost he um you know maybe he went to Anne orlando but we don't really see a lot of him later now there is one thing i want to talk about later i've never read any theory about this but we will get to that when we get to that in Anne orlando for now we're just trying to look at this so night king randall ruled over the balder knights now, the Tower Shield, Metal Great Shield, used by Knight Berenique. Now, this says, like, so here, if you go to the Great Sword, it says, a favorite of the Knight's Berenique. But this one says, used by Knight Berenique, known for his heavy armor. So, the Knight's Berenique, sim in my opinion, similar to Havel's group, is, it's either a kingdom with the Knight Berenique, like it's like a Knight King Berenique as well, or they're like the people that's fought with him and traveled with him, and so they're just the Knight's Berenique. But this is a specific guy here. He's by Knight Berenique, known for his heavy armor. This thick plate of iron is heavily defensive, but ultra heavy. Great shields are very stable and deflect attacks. However, one cannot parry and set bashes with the shield. And he has the Katarina Helm and the Balder Helm. Or sorry, the Katarina um, set and the Balder set and the Steel set. And this is the set that he's wearing, actually. Well, let's see what Katarina says. Distinctively shaped helm worn by the Knights of Katarina. Outside Katarina, it is often ridiculed for its onion like shape, infuriating the proud Knights. But the masterfully forged curved design makes it effective for parrying. So nothing else new there. I was just wondering why those two were different, but it's because it says it is often ridiculed or they are often ridiculed. Um, all right, Steel Helm. Helm of the Knights of Berenique, known for their heavy armaments and armor. Countless Knights of Berenique, once extolled as the mightiest of mighty, became undead and ventured to Lordran. But their journey was for naught as they went hollow and became a threat to all undead. So this crestfallen merchant is a Knights Berenique himself. All right, and then we have Balder, helm worn by the knights of the ancient kingdom of Balder, made from thick iron plates. Balder was the homeland of the Night King Rendell, but it came to ruin after a great many undead were spawned. And we already knew that, essentially. And then he has the Thunderstone Plate Ring and the Spellstone Plate Ring. And again, we saw with those, those just they boost things, but they have no additional lore. Nothing at all, I know. Rushed in like a naked babe, be skinned alive. Uh, that's a weird phrase. Okay, uh, so my time is going long here, so I guess it's because of that stupid Ricard. Um, but let me just, um, yeah, I guess we're gonna have a, um, I'm gonna have to kill this guy now. It would be great if he dropped the Flamberge. Thought I saw it. Okay. I'm going to stop here, actually, and we'll do it just like a short mini Sense Fortress Part 2. All right. See you next time. Thanks.